All right, welcome back. And let's begin our discussion, which borders or centers around uh, uh, setting an economic agenda for the president, or f yeah, for the president uh, going forward. Now, last week, the Senate confirmed all the ministerial nominees. And it's expected that the president will assign portfolios to the confirmed ministers this week, hopefully. Now, this morning, we'll be setting the economic agenda for the economic team of the president, which will be completed as soon as the ministers are inaugurated. Now, joining us from Lagos, we have Aditola Nola. Aditola is a Forbes under 30 CEO. Tola, you're welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you. You, re you. you look really relaxed. But we'll be joined very shortly by another guest in Abuja studio. But before then, let's talk with you, Aditola. All right. Uh, we saw the cabinet, you know, the president's cabinet, after his nominations, uh, uh, 43 of them, and um, none was under... And none was a youth, so to speak. How does that hit you? That you didn't make the list? <laughs> Actually, it's not surprising, I won't lie to you, because um, I understand that um, the ministerial list is more political than um, um, economic or something. I understand that the president um, has to touch all states. You know, everybody, you know, I think they are trying to form a kind of um, unity. Federalism. Something, federalism, something like that. But then we... We've always said something, we have a solution to that. I feel like um, the ministers are, should be for executions more. I feel like there should be um, an economic team formed, like probably like five people or you know, 10 people. Maybe people that, uh, uh, that was a confab during uh, um, President Jonathan's time, you know, and then maybe 10 out of those people that went to the confab could be chosen or smart people in Nigeria. I'm not saying that the minister uh, um, uh, are people smart. are not smart. I'm just saying that people like um, Prof. Patu Tomi, people like um, Bismarck Rwani, people that understand trade policy, industrial policy can be on that team. Yeah. And then bring out ideas for the president. You know, these are people that are strategic, they are innovative, they generate ideas. People like myself, you know, <laughs> can be on that team also. You know, and then the, the, the ministers should be more for execution. Like, um, okay, so we have ideas and then we want you to go into the market and make it work, you know. So I really don't have a problem with that list because I understand politics to a certain extent. But at the same time, I have a few problems that very less technocrats are on that list. And because, um, it, it, I mean, it took the president almost um, four months. The first time it took him six to seven months before choosing anybody. Now it took him like four months. No, and exactly. It Actually, it took about five months previously, and now it's just about uh, 50 days thereabout. Yes. Yeah, but since um, February, he's been elected since February. Yeah. You know, February till now is like um, six months, you know, and um, um, Boris Johnson was um, elected just a um, few days ago, and we already know that the people that he's going to be working with. So what I'm trying to say is, you know, if, if it takes that long before you, you have the list, we expect something different from what... Um, what we had before. But then, since we, we have to be political about it, then I feel like another thing should be formed separately to be able to give ideas, you know, innovative ideas, strategies, trade policies, industrial policies, and then the, the, these ministers are, are in there for execution. And that's okay. what I think. Uh, very well said, um, um, Tola. Uh, you, are, you are a Forbes African 30 and under 30 business CEO. So tell me, if you have the opportunity of being in that cabinet, what can you bring to the fore? Or maybe be in the economic team, not even the cabinet now, <laughs> the economic team. What can you bring to the fore? Actually, uh, myself and my friend, we discuss about these things because I'm politically oriented a bit. So what I think uh, we can do, first of all, is um, solve power issue. I have, I've, I've before um, being into real estate, I have done manufacturing. I've done manufacturing of leather. I, I was into shoemaking, so I understand um, a bit of um, production. So how do we solve um, this power issue? I understand that when you go out to say, oh, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to solve, um, Nigeria is a very big country, 200 million plus people. Uh, I'm going to go all out to solve this power issue and stuff. It might be a bit difficult. But there are some states and some places in Nigeria that's very industrial, like Lagos, like um, Aba, like Onicha, you know, like Kano, you know. Uh, is there a way we can um, um, uh, invest in renewable energy to solve the problem of these places. Yes. Um, uh, if we invest so much in renewable energy and then we solve power problem in these places, 
these places are where um, uh, uh, productions are done, you know, um, a lot of uh, industrialization, a lot of uh, trading. And, uh, I feel like if five of those states' power problem are solved, a whole lot of problems would be. It's, it's just like, uh, you know, mayb maybe in the UK, you know, places like um, London, Glasgow, mm -hmm. Glasgow and some key area yeah. and then you know you make things work there you can make <coughs> you're, you're trying to it's like the art of the nation mm. and you know a whole lot of things will happen from there all right Aditala Nola we'll come back to you in just a moment let's speak with one of our guests via phone line we're talking about these um, hashtag revolution now and filters uh, we now have Chris Mokobia on the phone uh, Chris good morning good morning how are you hello Chris Mokobia Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Wokobia. Now, we're talking about this hashtag revolution now in protest. Uh, we've heard from our correspondent some minutes ago uh, saying that the uh, police officers were manning the gates of the stadium, the entrance and the exit points of the stadium. Uh, security is really uh, at its peak uh, as we speak now. Now, tell me, what's, it, what do you, what's your take on this um, uh, suspension, so to speak? of um, these hashtag revolution now by the federal government? I have said repeatedly that the government that is unable to deliver on the promises of democracy will attract protests. But sadly, this government does not seem to understand that it is inherent and intrinsic in democratic rights to assemble and to protest against the ills of leadership. And, um, Unfortunately, since Saturday, they have been cramping the as of the revolutionary, Revolution Now initiative, which is lampoonable, which is very reprehensible. And, um, but that won't stop the result. That won't, uh, as at Saturday afternoon, uh, the feelers we got is that about 30 states have signed on to the Revolution Now initiative. And um, if you saw the release from the organizers. It was clear that nobody is uh, stoking uh, violence. What we're saying is that the time has come for leadership to be responsible and responsive to the people, that the time has come for government to ensure that uh, uh, even at the level of the National Assembly, that this humongous pay in a country that is predominantly poor and that has at least at the least minimum wage in Africa, but the highest paid lawmakers in the world is addressed. We are saying that the time has come for leadership to address the needs of the teeming masses of our country. Unfortunately, uh, rather than address the fundamentals, uh, the state, the instruments of state coercion is being deployed against the masses of our country. And that is sad. You know, uh, everywhere they're either bugging phones, they're either threatening people, or blocking access to national facilities, like you noted, the stadium in Lagos. You know, but I, I believe that um, what must go as an advice to government and the operators of state is that word that John F. Kennedy used when um, the African-American demonstrations was becoming stronger? That those who make peaceful change impossible make violent change inevitable. And so government must take note and, and deal. Hello? I can hear you. Hello? I can hear you, Chris. Uh Okay, just in case, uh, before, before I forget, uh, your last statement, uh, are you in any way encouraging violence? No, I just quoted uh, John F. Kennedy. It's, it's an advice to leadership. If you stifle and muzzle democratic rights to protest, invariably you'll be building underneath uh, agents, of destruction and violence because if you refuse those who are civil and those who know that passive action is important that demonstrations ought to be peaceful and organized and decent if you refuse them the right to protest what you will do is invariably empowering those who do not care to take laws to their hands and that's exactly what we're saying that this government must understand remember that when 
the immediate past government was here. President John uh, Buhari, Adam Soshomole, yours sincerely and several other people protested several times against the Jonathan government. Nobody was arrested. Nobody was refused the right to protest. And then this government that prided itself as an agent of change has become draconic and draconian. Remember what uh, Professor Wolisinka said, that this government is so much uh, like their Bata government. And that's exactly what was seen. Remember how the Jade and Jew was detained uh, in Kano prisons for so long because he, he was against government. Remember how many people have been arrested and detained under this watch. And people who are close to President Mohamed Buhari must tell him that this is a democracy and that the right and freedom of protest is intrinsic and enshrined by and in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All right, um, uh, Professor Wokobia. Uh, the, the term revolution connotes different things, one of which uh, is an overthrow, an insurrection, a riot, a coup, uh, just to mention but a few synonyms of the word revolution. Uh, do you think it was the right term for Showaré and others to have used to drive home their message? Let me say this, that um, Every so often a jittery society tries to mortify the true meaning of words, tries to destroy the true meaning of words. The gully bull and the bandwagon almost always dives towards it and dances at the altar of wrong definition of words. Uh, revolution, the African-American protest led by Martin Luther King Jr. ranks up as one of the most peaceful protocols in human history. It was called the African-American Revolution. You have several approaches to what you have to look at is the depth of the communique and the programmatic of the uh, Revolution Now initiative. Remember that just a few days ago, Shawe was clear enough in saying that Nigeria should go the way of revolution rather than war. War is violence. War is violence. He has talked about the need to engage his government through peaceful protest. And whatever it leads to, the truth is that have you forgotten that in the initial process of the Tahir Square Revolution in Egypt, it was very peaceful. If government provokes a peaceful revolu revolution, then what you get is perhaps a violent revolution. And that's exactly what this government is increasingly doing. Okay, Chris. Um, thank you so very much for that uh, contribution. Uh, uh, thank you for talking to us and to our viewers out there. We apologize for the digression. We will keep doing this for as long as uh, we keep getting updates about the ongoing um, uh, protests and the reactions on uh, that revolution march that um, seem to have been stalled by security agents in Nigeria. So let's go back to our conversation. Uh, we have still have Detola Nola, who is um, the Af Forbes Africa 30 and uh, under 30 business. CEOs, yes. Um, before we went on that um, on that break, uh, or rather in that um, a bit of a digression, there you were, you were talking about um, what you would bring to the fore as uh, if you find your way into uh, the cabinet. And your focus was on power. Yes, you you were more or less like um, you would focus um, so much on power. Um, n not only on power, actually, yes. th th that was um, the first thing I mentioned, yes. you know. Um, I feel like when you um, have power, you can manufacture. When you can manufacture, you can export. When you can export, you can bring in dollars, and uh, which is like uh, one of the few issues that we are, you know, we're not sending a whole lot of things out, we are just consuming. And secondly is um, um, employment, creating employment and po opportunities for Nigerian youth. I mean, as um, as a businessman, I have managed to do that in my own uh, little space. Um, you know, I, apart from very tiny homes and properties, that you know, we've uh, we have more than thirty staffs. We have one thousand two hundred cons consultants. You know, that sells our property, can commission, and then indirectly, indirectly from one thousand two hundred people, um, a whole lot of people. Uh, uh, dependent a lot, a whole lot of other people dependent that are dependent on that those 1200 people that's that we created another uh, uh, travel and talk company for employment also for just for employment just for saying oh, a whole lot of Nigerian youth are coming out of the university and then they need to uh, they need to get employed 
And so what we are saying is, if we have the opportunity to advise or be on the advisory team, we'll say that th there should be a private-public partnership between um, the government and then this business individuals, this um, um, businessman that shrewd about business. So wh what he can do is create, um, set up a fund, like say 50 billion naira, more like a venture capital uh, 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 capital fund, fund, and then to say that okay, um, uh, we can invest in. Uh, listen, if there are 1,000 entrepreneurs out there, 1,000 ideas that are funded and they are able to create 1,000 jobs, you know, in say two or three years. That's, that's one million jobs directly, and then indirectly creating some other, you know. For example, we are real estate uh, people now. We have builders, we have people that indirectly work for us, that they're not even employed in our company, but then they work for us and they create employment indirectly also. So what we are saying is, form a public-private partnership, you know, fund this like a venture capital uh, uh, fund, and then create, give it targets say 1000 um 1000 jobs and then you know let's see what happens in th two or three years if you can manage to do that for entrepreneurs you know we feel like that that's going to solve to a certain extent the um unemployment issue you know and that's like one or two of uh, the stuff that we're going to bring to the table when you know you, you've mentioned a number of things that and, and then you said if you were in the position to advise the government we are here set an agenda for the government so you're already here and your voice will be heard uh, by, uh, by the president or by those in authority. Uh, you, I, I read about you and uh, while you were an undergraduate, you were into uh, business. You were selling clothes to, I think, a female uh, student and maybe some male as well. And then you graduated and you started sh shoemaking and then you ventured into tourism. And there was something that struck my attention from your profile. I think the green housing project, you, you know, you said a community where uh, they are self-sufficient in terms of power generation and so on and so forth, which I was really impressed. Now, we are, we are a country that were yet to embrace electric cars, for example. How do you see, you know, if you can see as a young man, if you can see that is uh, the possibility of making a green housing a reality, what would you be telling those in government? So, um, I feel like the difference in uh, um, putting a young man and an archaic person in position is the innovative idea that the young uh, person tends to bring into play when he is there. For example, when we, uh, whenever we start our development, we think about it from selling of the land to being of the houses to when people start living there. You know, so we thought about it. Uh, what's the major challenge? Uh, what are the major challenges in? Um, when people buy real estate and they try to live, I live in Lake here and you know, there, there's really electricity, you know. And then, so what, what we're talking about is we could actually have partnerships with companies that we invite them over to say, when we build, you create uh, renewable energy, you know, we want the um, environment to be noiseless and, you know, and um, green as well. So we have partnerships with those companies. It's very, very easy. It's like, um, it's like, it's like mutualism. They gain from us. What do they gain from us? They supply us um, what we need, electricity. They gain money. We benefit from them by having 24 hours electricity. We gain electricity. And, uh, you know, do you think the government is ready for this? Do I think the government is ready? Listen, if we can do it with just negotiation and little funds, the government can do it. You know, they, they, there's a lot of money in Treasury. It's just about putting the right strategy in place and you know, making sure it works. Uh, just like I said, these people can execute. Anybody can execute, actually. You can be in um, <coughs> arts ministry. I know you're a uh, broadcaster. Arts ministry, if you have, if you know, um, I feel like that's what going to school is meant for. If you know what to do, you know how to do it. How to do it is usually a little bit easier, especially when you have help around you. So put the strategic team in place. Let's give ideas. Let's, uh, you know, write out these strategies, and it can be done. Okay. All right, um, Tola, Adetola Nola. Forbes, eighth Afri eight, Forbes Africa 30 under 30 business years. Uh, um, let, me just try, let me just try and stream your thoughts together. In creating an agenda, you say you, you expect government to focus on power, and you're also asking for a private uh, partnership, partnership uh, with the private sector private in achieving this. You're also talking about the need to 
to, to build a small and medium scale enterprise. Uh, it is the engine room of any economy. Thank you so very much for talking to us on the show, Tola. Thank you very we much. We appreciate that. Uh, Thank you. And so that's about it on this segment. Tola, uh, Detola Nola, who is a uh, Forbes Africa 30 under 30 business CEO. So we'll take a break when we come back. Our conversation will continue. Don't go away. Say something, you say no.